Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be making a hand-painted wooden bridge over a stream. So this again will be a full course looking at the different techniques for hand painting in Blender 2.8. I'll be giving tips on game optimization. This is a relatively low poly model with 1300 faces roughly. And by the end of the course you should have a good knowledge of hand painting techniques, especially with stylized design. You should have complete understanding of how to set up objects for hand painting and a good understanding of how you can optimize these things for games. It will be an in-depth, detailed tutorial with lots of tips, tricks and guidance. And the emphasis will be on the learning of these new techniques just as much as the final outcome. Now this course is based on a beginner's level, but you must have some understanding of the basic interface. And I would strongly recommend looking at several of my introductory courses to give you the basics so you don't get lost too quickly in this one. Do remember to check out my website where all the courses are free, gabbit.co.uk, links in the description. It's basically my YouTube channel, but a bit more organized. Also for the texture painting, I am using a tablet. It's a bit tough with just a mouse, not impossible, but I'd strongly recommend a graphics tablet as well. Again, links in the description for guidance on that. So in terms of how I'm going to model this, I'm going to build some of it up using modules. I'll make the model available for those that want to break it down and see what I've done. And I'll put that on something like Gumtree so you can pay what you want. And it's an easy way for you to support me if you feel you can. So things like the bridge, for example. So I'll build just a few planks and paint them and then we can combine them to make a bridge. That way we can reuse these models. You can even take them into another scene and build a house out of them if you liked. At the end of it, we can then combine those textures and modules together. We can refine our painting at that point and then optimize for games. So let's begin. I'm going to start by creating a base, which should eventually look something like this. I've gone a tiny bit higher poly with this base because I felt my previous base was just too low. The way to decide on the poly count you want is to start building it up, but look at the silhouette, and the silhouette is kind of like the outline. Notice I've got a slight kink here, and I want the grass sort of overlapping my base. And if I go round my object, from this type of distance, you can really see there is a definite dent there. I've also done some small dents around the side here, and that breaks up my silhouette. Can you see here, it's very rounded, but then it just breaks it there, and that can be a sort of lump or rockiness. I've also beveled these edges. Now I may not need quite this many faces in areas like here, so I may reduce it, but the important bits are these edges here. So when I move around here, I've got some structure to show off the shape. And when I view things from this sort of angle, I can still see that structure. However, these polygons or faces here aren't really being utilized because wherever I move to, we don't really see any influence of them. So when we get to that point, I will be taking those bits away. The same for the edges here. They're just about adding a bit, so they're fine. But on the inside, we could do with losing a few. I've also added some polygons in here, so the stream base will have some shape to it. And a small amount of polygons like this will not make a huge amount of difference. The one thing to bear in mind is that as soon as you start painting, it's very difficult to change your polygons from that point without having to repaint areas. It's worth noting that the polygon size will depend on the distance you are going to be from your object. So if this was our entire game, and if there was some strange game about getting from one side of the stream to the other, and this was our only model, then we'd probably be at a distance of about here. So we need to see these edges and silhouette aspects to the shape. But if we were zoomed out to about here, can you notice I can hardly see the kink there? So there'd be no point in this loop cut going around here or indeed some of the bevels. Perhaps here is worthwhile, but certainly not this kink here. So that's what you have to think about, how far away from your object you're going to be, how much detail you need in that outline or silhouette. So let's make this base. So start off with a new scene, file, new, general. I'll have my shortcut keys down the bottom here to help. And we will start off with a cylinder. So I will delete the default cube and shift A to add, mesh cylinder. You've got your add menu up here as well, remember. Now this polygon count is quite nice. It gives us a reasonable curve around here, especially when we zoom into about this distance. I think my original one, I had 16, which I feel is a bit low. You could go to 20, but you can still see the edges a bit. So if you wanted a nice smooth model, and I think I'll do that this time, let's go for 32. Now I'm making sure it's things that are divisible by four, because then it's easy to add a grid to the top. So I can get rid of my cap fills, 
and put nothing. And I might as well change the depth while I'm here to something that's suitable to my island. Somewhere around there. Into edit mode with tab. Select the top edges with alt left click and go to face grid fill. And that fills it in nicely. We don't really need to fill the bottom because we won't see that. We've also got a button here, offset. And that's slightly useful because then we can line up our intersecting edges so they line up with the X and Y axes. That will just make it a little bit simpler for modeling later. So I suggest you use that. It doesn't make a big difference though. Okay, so let's build the sides and the stream. Now lots of people look at this and think, well, I'll select this middle bit and pull it downwards so it's a stream. And actually, that's a really awkward way of doing it. So if I press Alt A to deselect all, three to select face mode, and C to circle select. Using circle select, you can just paint your selection with left click. You can clear with middle click, and you can get out of circle select with right click. So C for circle select, select those middle ones, and right click to come out of that. E to extrude, and if I pull it down, I've got these faces at the end and overlapping geometry. So that's a bad way to do it. Instead, we need to be thinking about extrusions pulling out from our geometry. So, deselect all, Alt A, C to circle select, and let's get these areas. And we're going to lift them upwards. E to extrude, and up we go. Have a good look around, change the shape if you want. I'm going to select the bottom edges with Alt left click, and G to grab, Z in the Z axis, and somewhere around there. Now you may notice these sharp edges here and it's very steep and sharp there. And I think that doesn't look or suit my model. So I will be putting a few bevels in. I think a bevel across the bottom here and here. So select those two edge lines with Alt left click and Control B to bevel. Now it may be a good idea to put a segment in there and then we can cut in here and create quads over this side out of our end gons. It's always a good idea to build up in quads first and then you can reduce it later before you start painting. I also want to do the same with the top edges here so I'm going to go round shift alt clicking to select all those. But you can see I'm having a problem and that's because of the end gon and that's a classic example of where end gons can be a bit of a pain when you're modeling. We can always shift left click to get rid of those selections we don't want and let's go round again and shift left click that one, control B to bevel, and I've missed a few. Just select those, control B to bevel, to about there. Now just be aware that my bevel's going inwards a lot this way. There are different options with your width type. This is set to offset. We can just change it to width for more accuracy on the bevel. And there's other options here as well. And you can see that my silhouette looks nice from the edge there. So this curve is helping us to round off the edges. But remember, if you're from this distance, you don't need that much. I'll do the same with the other side. Let's make sure I've got them all this time. And Control B, somewhere around there. I could have done it at the same time as the other one and it'd be identical, but it doesn't matter in this case. We're not going for perfect symmetry. I feel like the corners here are very sharp and that might be tricky to paint. So I'm going to add a bevel across here as well. So when you're viewing from this sort of angle, it might be just a bit jarring. So control B to bevel those and set that. So we've got the basics of our simple scene. We have got a couple of engons around. I'm going to leave those for the moment and tidy them up later. What I would like is for my grass to kind of overlap slightly. So I'm going to put a loop cut around here. Now notice I can't do that because of the engon. So that is a bit awkward at this stage. There's a couple of ways of getting around that. The easiest is to just add a loop cut up here instead with control R bring it down fairly low, and then scale that up with S. However, can you notice my scale is acting unusually? It doesn't really know which point to scale from. I'll cancel that, and Alt S will scale from the normals, and that's a bit more sensible in this case. I can then drag this down, G then Z, so my grass is going to overlap my dirt and rocky base. I might bring this one in as well, so Alt S to scale in the normals. And you can always hold down Shift if you want smaller increments. I'll do the same over here, Control R, Alt S to scale, holding down Shift this time, G then Z, and I'll bring both these loop cuts down just a touch, G then Z. 
It's a bit high poly at the moment. For example, we don't need all the extra faces in here and some down here. But again, we'll sort those out shortly. Now let's go to proportional edit and start manipulating our shape. I'm going to go to vertex mode with one and I'm roughly going to go to top view and start sorting out my little stream. So have your circle nice and big and then it can go across in a sort of stream-like way. I'm going to manipulate other aspects now. So select the vertices, G to grab, and just start pulling things around. So it's got some variation. Remember to make your circle bigger and smaller for finer details in variation. And remember to always look at your silhouette and see what's going on. So you might want it going in and out slightly in different places. You may even want variation on your base too. Okay, that looks quite nice. I feel like the base along here is still too uniform and circular. So what I'm going to do is get my knife tool now and start cutting that up a bit. So K to go into the knife tool, make sure you're snapped against the vertex and then create some cuts using left click to create your points and enter to complete. Don't worry too much about triangles. At this stage, I don't think it's going to matter because we don't need any more loop cuts. Once I've done that, I can then bring this bottom edge in a bit. So looking from the top, turn proportional edit off with O and grab that in. And now when I've got a rocky base, there'll be some variation in different places. So a couple of those around the place. K to go into my knife tool, left click to add vertices, enter to apply your cut and then grab that bottom one. And I can also tidy up these end gons a bit. So K with the knife tool. And now I've accidentally added an extra one there. So be careful of that. If you do that, you can always undo. But if you do end up with that by accident, just click on it, press delete, and then dissolve vertices rather than delete. If you delete the vertices, it will delete all the faces around it as well. So I can just tidy those end gons up. I might need to add a triangle in here to tidy this one up. So there we are, there's a simple base. In the next episode, I'll talk about optimizing this for gaming and we'll be building a lot more of the other items. This is probably the hardest item to model. So you can see how you get on with the other items as well. But I will be briefly going over how to model those in the next episode, then we'll get on to the painting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.